Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love online. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. And you know, one thing that's really been getting under my skin is how we as believers are so quick to yield to the flesh and be totally jerked around by the devil and all his tricks and devices. I don't get that. I don't get why we allow that so often in our lives when we have the Holy Spirit and we can constrain and restrain and handle whatever comes our way, but we go with the flow. And if the devil wants to whiplash us, we whiplash right along and dance to his tune and walk to his beat. Why is that? All right. Now, this is what I want to share. I'm going to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, the thing I want to say to that is, there are so many born-again Christians knowing who have been taught, let's say it like that, so many born-again Christians who have been taught well how to do spiritual warfare, how to battle in the spirit, how to take authority in the name of Jesus, how to defeat demons, how to run them off, send them tail, tail tucked between their legs, running, just disappear in a puff of smoke. They come one way, go running seven ways. But it's something about so many of us who know this, yet every time life throws a curve, we're sitting on the ground having a hissy fit, screaming at the top of our lungs, pulling our hair out. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And we're hollering for help. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of a woman holding her baby in her arms, screaming at the top of her lungs, my baby's not breathing, my baby's not breathing. Never dawning on her to pick up the phone. She's got four minutes. Pick up the phone. That means four minutes without oxygen before any brain damage happens. It only takes 15 seconds to dial or two seconds to dial 911. And all she's got to do is say, tell me how to do CPR. And within 10 seconds, they will tell you, pinch the nose, tilt the head back, blow in the nose and the mouth or however they tell you to do it for a baby. And you do what they say do. You're still under a minute. And what gets me is the woman is standing there with her baby in her arms, screaming at the top of her lungs. Help! Help! What do I do? What do I do? Somebody help! 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 And she's doing nothing but panicking. Do you realize panic kills? Do you realize that? Some of you swimmers, great swimmers, you get a cramp, it, 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 it messes with you so bad you start wrestling with the water. You know all you got to do is flip on your back and float and say, somebody come get me, I got a bad cramp. But no, you panic. I don't know what it is about, I don't know if it's a spirit of panic out there or what, but what is wrong? that we push the panic button before we think. What is wrong that we push the panic button and the sirens go flying, but we haven't called on the right help? We haven't prayed. We haven't taken a moment to discern what's going on. We haven't asked the Lord to lead and guide us in that moment. No, we would rather panic we would rather emote over here and emote over there. And for those of you who don't know what I'm saying, 
emote is giving into your emotions. You, you, you react to this, you react to that, you react to the other. Everything's a great reactionary, explosive event. And it's some, some of the things we're tripping off of is not that big of a deal. But we trip. I think what it is is some of us are frustrated. We want to travel the world. But since we can't travel the world, we surf our emotions. Maybe that's what it is. I'm trying to figure out what is it about us as born-again Christians that we drop our armor, we drop our weapons on the ground. There's a song. That's what I'm thinking of when I say that. That says, have we walked into the enemy's camp, laying our weapons down? shedding our armor as we go, leaving it on the ground. We've got to be strong in the power of his might. Prove to the enemy we are the army of the Lord, and we won the victory. But we act like we're always on the losing end. Why is that? Is it that we really don't believe? What is going on in our heads at the moment when someone says, if this doesn't happen, that's gonna, that hammer's gonna fall. And you say, oh no, what am I gonna do? Instead of saying, Lord, tell me what's happening. Tell me how to deal with it. Tell me what to do. Keep me at peace. Because whatever they say has nothing to do with anything. It's what you say that counts. What do you say? What is it about us that we, we forget we have a God when a crisis rises up? We forget we have the name of Jesus, the power of his might. We forget all that we have in our arsenal. We forget our arsenal for that matter. Like Lynn always says, put on that armor. She's always talking about put on that armor. And we walk out into the enemy's camp, buck naked, y'all. What is up with that? I'm asking you, think about it. Ask yourself, why do I freak out every time Satan wags his little tail and barks with his toothless self? Why do we freak out? I, I just want to ask you why. See, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Pull them suckers down. You've got the power. You've got the might. You've got the right. And guess what? You've got everything you need right inside of you to pull everything down that the enemy tries to rise up against you. No, Satan, your heart is pounding. Your heart is beating hard. You're feeling the pain in your upper left hand arm. I do it all the time. I rebuke heart attack in the name of Jesus. No, Satan, it ain't happening in this body. This body is the temple of God. When do you take authority? Here's another example. I'm sitting in the choir stand. This is about maybe 30 years ago. Sitting in the choir stand. All of a sudden, the room is spinning. I mean spinning, y'all. I'm about to go unconscious. I can feel myself slipping. So I brace myself in my chair while I'm saying quickly, I don't have time to ask them to pray. I don't have that kind of time. So I use every second I have, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke stroke. Lord, don't let me have a stroke. I rebuke stroke. I rebuke high blood pressure in Jesus' name. I command my blood pressure to go down, go down, go down in the name of Jesus. Go down in the name of Jesus. I rebuke stroke. I rebuke embolism. I rebuke, uh, I was just going on and on and on until the spinning stopped. And the reason I went to stroke was, be, I mean, the reason I rebuke stroke is because the left side of my face went numb. And when the left side of my face went numb, it didn't stop there. I broke out in a profuse sweat, and then my hearing went <coughs> closed up. And I knew I was on my way to a full-blown, 
full right side stroke, which affects your left side. And I was like, no, we ain't going out like this. So I rebuked it. I told my body what to and what not to do. What do you do? You get a headache. I get a headache, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. What do you do when you have a physical attack and you know it's demonic? You go and get an aspirin? Or do you take authority? What do you do when you close your eyes and you're dozing off and you see a demon's face jump up in yours? You get scared, turn on the lights, oh no! Or do you rebuke that sucker, turn over and go to sleep? What do you do? What do you do when you wake up from a demonic dream and the, the demons are just bouncing off the walls and they're just all over trying to mess with you and harass you? There are things called harassing spirits and they love to pounce on you when you're asleep because they're too chicken to do it when you're awake. You know how many calls I get in the middle of the night from people panicking because they had a demonic dream when all they had to do is rebuke it when they woke up or rebuke it while they were asleep in their dream. Have the presence of mind in a dream to rebuke a demon. One thing I prayed years ago, the first demon I encountered I did everything that I don't like to do now because I didn't know about all the armor. I was saved about maybe a month. But I heard what the people said at church and I used what I knew. And all I knew was what I heard. <laughs> and I heard them say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So that's what I said. And I mean, but it took me a while. I was totally defeated. Couldn't move, totally paralyzed couldn't move my lips. I was so weak, all I could do was mumble. And I was in a twilight sleep, y'all. I wasn't dead asleep. And as soon as I, as I got my strength, every time I mumbled, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Every time I mumbled that, this was after I was defeated and I finally said, well, let me at least try that. Once I tried it and I kept saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, my strength came back. And I hollered, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That bad boy disappeared right before my eyes. I call it a twilight sleep because I was dreaming and then I woke up and then I saw it disappear. You know, you know when you're battling demons. You know it. Right after that happened, I asked the Lord, from this day forward, Whenever I have a, a dream where a demon tries to attack me or shows up in my dream anywhere, I pray that you give me the presence of mind to automatically, instinctively rebuke that baby in the name of Jesus. Happens every time. I always have the presence of mind. It's just there. God did. He answered my prayer. You see, <laughs> there is nothing the enemy can do to you while you're laying there asleep. If you know it's the enemy, you have the presence of mind. You also have the presence of mind to wake yourself up and rebuke that sucker or rebuke him in the dream and wake up. I was laying in bed with my husband years ago. Milton was sleeping. Oh, he sounded like a bear. He was just snoring away. And then all of a sudden, he, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I said, hello. He knows what to do. Do you? Do you know what to do? When you see somebody acting out of character and they're coming at you in a weird way and you wonder, well, what's all that about? I didn't do anything to them. Does it dawn on you to say, uh-uh, say, no, no, I bind you. I shut that down in the name of Jesus. I rebuke attitude. I rebuke fussing. I rebuke argument. I rebuke strife. I rebuke wrath in the name of Jesus. Does it ever dawn on you to take authority over your situation while you're wide awake?
at work, at home, at church, at the store, at the bank, at the doctor's office, wherever, on the bus. Does it ever dawn on you to take authority? You see a fight break out. Does it dawn on you to say, uh-uh, no, 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 not while I'm here. I shut that down. I rebuke uh, violence, anger, strife. In the name of Jesus, stop it right now. I was, I was talking to Lynn and Pat last week about how uh, I was in the parking lot. And this little 12-year-old kid, was blaspheming God worse than I ever heard an adult do it. And I could tell by his voice and the way he was going on and on and on and on. He, he was, he was demon-possessed. I could, I could tell it. And I'm parking my car way at the other end. That's how loud he was. And I said, uh-uh, Satan, you shut up. I'm a child of the Most High King. And you're not going to blaspheme my father's name. So I command you to shut up. As long as I'm on this property, you cannot speak. I silence you and forbid you to speak in Jesus' name. And I walk from the car all the way to the door. I was at the other end of the parking lot at Ralph's in Pasadena. And by the time I got 20 feet to the door, I could see the guy because I saw him when I was pulling in. I had to pass him up to park. So I knew who, it, who was doing all the blaspheming. I'm heading into the store and that guy's eyes are beamed on me. They're fixed on me the whole time. Followed me all the way into the store. Now he's still outside. I get through with my business and come out of the store. And he's still standing there in the parking lot, dead quiet. He's not muttering a word the whole time, going in or coming out. And he's glaring at me the whole, the whole distance to my car till I was out of his view line. And I got in my car and took off. Now, I don't know when he started talking after that, but I didn't hear not one word of blasphemy the whole time after I said what I said. And this is how I said it. The, the boy had to be maybe 150 feet away from me, behind a whole slew of cars. And I'm sitting there under my breath saying, uh-uh, Satan, talking just like this. No, no, you're not going to talk. I'm a child of the Most High King. You're going to shut up while I'm on this property. And you're not going to say one word of blasphemy against my father while I'm on this property. In the name of Jesus. There's no way that boy would even hear my mouth. No way. No way. Traffic going up and down Lake Avenue. I'm sitting in my car, just wound the window up, getting ready to get out. There's no way that boy would hear my voice. But the demons heard me loud and clear. Listen, you have authority. Take it. Quit laying down, letting them kick you to the left and kick you to the right. Quit allowing the demons to kick you to the curb. Quit allowing them to intimidate you and harass you in the middle of the night. They don't have a right. Now, they're on their job. They're doing what, what they do. That's what demons do. So, But God gave us a can of rage. Mm-hmm. And one squirt is all it takes. And that squirt spells Jesus in the air. When that Jesus squirts on them, they're gone. Just like that. It's over. Game over, baby. And if you run into any of those real stubborn demons, this is what you do. You praise God at the top of your lungs. Praise him, praise him, praise him. I learned that in a dream, battling demons. I was in my living room. I'm dreaming now. My husband sleeping in his recliner, just as sleep as he can be. And while I'm, I'm, I'm looking out the window, and I could see something peeping in, and I felt that whole demonic atmosphere. 
come up in my living room and I was like, oh no, 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 ain't nothing breaking in here. And this, this one came in the form of a woman. And when she stood there, I told her, I said, no, 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 I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This is one of those stubborn demons. And she said, look, I will leave when I get good and ready. And I said, oh, really now? Is that the game you're playing? Yeah, two can play by that game. And I started singing praises and shouting praises to the Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God, praise your holy name. And she clapped her hand, slammed into her ear and said, shut up, shut up, shut up. Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. I tormented that demon just for spite. See, that's one time you can be vengeful, spiteful and mean to a demon and not have to apologize to the Lord for it. I praise the Lord left and right. And check this out in the dream. This was bizarre. I've never been in a tornado, but I've seen it on TV. And the sound was similar to the sound of a tornado and a hurricane wind. Now I have heard that where the wind whistles. All of a sudden, the wind started blowing in my living room while I'm praising God. And the demons got her hands clamped to her ears. And while I'm praising God, my feet lift off from the ground. I'm a foot above the ground in the cross position. The wind is whipping in my living room, whipping. Milton sleep. He doesn't know what's going on. Nothing in my living room is being moved out of place. But the wind is whipping so hard, it sounds the way you would expect a tornado mixed with a hurricane to sound like. The whistle, the woo, everything. And I lowered myself at will and walked over toward the demon. And I grabbed her by the shoulders and I looked her in the eye and I praised God in her face like this. And I can't stand anybody up in my face. That's my space. I don't know how people can talk like that. But I was so angry. I wanted to torment this demon. And I tortured her. She couldn't break loose from my grip while I was praising God. That was where the strength, the power of his might was in my hand and coming out of my mouth in the praises of God. And then I said, and when she tried to break loose, I said, uh-uh, you ain't leaving my house till I tell you you can. And I kept praising God. And then I pushed her. I said, now you get out of my house and don't you ever come back or it'll be worse. <laughs> yes, I battled a lot of demons. See, Battling demons doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. And some of you guilt trip wondering, what's wrong with me? No. That's part of the walk with Christ. That's part of it. But unless God has opened your eyes, you're not going to know what you're dealing with. You're just going to think life is pouncing on you. But God will open, can and will open your eyes. So you can see these boogers and you know where they are, how to deal with them. Like the one that came in my living room when I was only six weeks old in the Lord. And I had no idea at 530 in the morning when the demon revealed himself. And I do believe that was orchestrated by God because I was the only one who was saved in the family. Why would a demon come to the only one who could get rid of him? Mm -hmm. I believe that was of God. That demon was in my living room and I felt the evil, but then I was scared because I didn't know, you know, I just, I just knew to rebuke him, but I didn't know all the authority we had. So yeah, I was scared. I was a baby in Christ. And he leans his head in at me. I could see his face. I could see his shape. And he grins, evil grin. And I'm like, ah, I rebuke you. Get out of my house in the name of Jesus. I knew what to say. I was just scared. But I said it over and over and over until the whole feeling of evil was out of my house. And then the Holy Spirit led me to pray for the members of my family. When I got to my sister, I could not stop 
praying for my sister. She was going through a divorce at the time. And all I kept saying was, Lord, don't let her hurt herself. Don't let her do herself in because of the emotional pain. Don't let her do this. Don't let her do that. Right? Mm -hmm. now, I had no idea what kind of demon that was. But God gave me a dream once I went to bed. And my nephew, Todd, in the dream, called me. I answered the phone and he said, I'm Pat. Can you please come here real quick? It's mama. She tried to commit suicide. I hang the phone up. Next thing in the dream, just like you change a scene in a movie, I'm in her front yard following the police over them, floating over their heads, watching the police and the paramedics run toward the kitchen. And as soon as I went to look in the kitchen, I woke up. When I called my sister the third time, she finally fessed up that at 5 30, the very time I saw the demon at 5.30 in the morning. Listen to this. She was saying, I can't take it. I can't take it. It hurts too much. And the demon said, you don't have to. Just end it. And as soon as she agreed with the demon, all of her love for life, her emotions, her hurt, everything left her. And now she felt like a, a dead person walking, you know, dead man walking. She felt like a dead woman walking. And she's living, looking around in her living room trying to figure out what could she use to hook up to her pilot light and just look like she fell asleep and died. And while she was trying to plan her demise, the Lord gave her a vision, a vision, y'all. Check this out. In the vision, she sees her kids come into the kitchen and she sees her own dead body slumped over the stove. And they're freaking out. And as soon as she saw her children freak out like that, all of her emotions rushed back in her. She said it felt like a football player had kicked her right in the chest. That's how suddenly her emotions came back in. Mm-hmm. And she cried and said, I, I can't do that to my kids. That'll mess them up for life. And I told her, I said, I know you don't want to hear this, but God saved your life last night. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was battling. I just knew it was a demon. I had no idea it was a demon of suicide. I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of you are going to be dealing with demons of suicide. They're already, they're already all over the place now. They're bouncing off the chandeliers, trying to find every little sucker they can pick off. Don't let them pick you off. You feel the desire to kill yourself? Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. If you're a child of the Most High King, if you're not, ask God to protect you in the name of Jesus from the demon of suicide. If all you can do is pick up an old rusty, dusty Bible and read Psalms 23, God's word will also get rid of his, of the demons. It was one of the things I did when I was unsaved. I didn't know about demonic warfare and all that. All I knew was Psalms 23 because my mother quoted it all the time. So I picked up the Bible and turned to Psalms 23 and read it out loud. And the evil was gone. Even when you're unsaved, God's word can get rid of a demon for you. Do something. Don't lay there and play dead. Don't lay there and allow the demons and the, the evil to rape you. Don't go to work and allow problems to run your nerves here. And you're pulling your hair out over there and your blood pressure is going sky high. Why? You're allowing the circumstances to rule you. Don't allow circumstances to take control of your life. You're the one in control. You serve the most high God. Oh, okay. I have fussed. I have chewed you out. And I have told enough stories to keep you thinking for the rest of the week. I really, really hope you take it to heart. If you're not saved, read the Bible if you get a demonic attack. That includes, listen to this, some of you, if all you can say, if you're unsaved, 
Jesus, help me. Lord, Lord, save me. Uh, protect me in the name of Jesus. The name of, just saying the name of Jesus could soften the blow, could get rid of them for you. But the bottom line, I don't care if you can't talk. I don't care if they have you so paralyzed you can't talk. Mumble it. Trust me. God will make sure that when it gets from your mumbling mouth to their ears, it will be totally intelligible to the demons and they will have to respond. Yes. So what I'm saying is in this last in these last days, we've got demons of all kinds out there trying to wreak havoc in people's lives. Don't allow it. Don't walk around buck naked with no weapons on you, thinking that, oh, well, I can't do any better than this. Yes, you can. It's a matter of choice. You can go off or you can take control of the situation. You can panic or you can handle it. You hear what I'm saying? You can save a life or lose a life. You can live or you can choose to die. You can persist and persevere or you can give up. It's your choice. But see, here's the sad part. For those of you who give up, you have no idea what God had in store for you. Eye has not seen ear has not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what god has prepared do you hear what I, oh my goodness i wish you could get this don't be so quick to throw in the towel don't be weary in well doing yeah life gets hard yeah sometimes when it rains it pours sometimes trouble over here trouble over there trouble over there trouble. god will not allow you to handle any more than what you can bear. He created you. He knows you. He knows all of your weaknesses. He knows all your brokenness. He knows what you can bear. But remember this, whatever you do in life, your choices, your choices, your response can make or break the situation. Your response can rise you above it or enable you to sink down into a pit. You have to make the choice. You have to rise up in your spirit and say, No! No more! I will not take it! And then you go after the demons in an offense rather than a defense and offense you pursue them until you run them straight into the pit in the name of jesus using god's word through prayer through praise whatever it takes by any means necessary get rid of those suckers before they succeed in getting rid of you amen amen